uh, very good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the second session. So the second session today is focusing on the uh, digit platform overview, uh, where we have Gansham from the pl platform team. And the topics that he will be discussing today is on the digit architecture. I think this question was raised in the first session as well uh, to answer more questions around the digit architecture, uh, the microservices and coexistence. So these are the three uh, topics that Gansham will be answering or uh, training us all on in, in this session. So yes, like I, we said the last time, you can use the chat and the QA box to ask us questions and we are more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, so yes, uh, Gansham, it's over to you. So thanks, Abhishek. Thanks. Just give me a minute. Sure, Gansham. I'm not able to share the screen actually. You should be able to do it now. Wait, there are some. I think I will need to reconnect now. Okay. Let me rejoin now. Yeah, before. Okay. While uh, Gansham uh, logs in back, I will just shoot the first uh, survey question, poll question, just trying to understand uh, what are the microservices tool that all the attendees have worked on. This is kind of for us to understand what tools are you aware of and kind of see if we can answer more questions around that. So yes, the poll is online. So request all of you to put in your answers. So Gansham, uh, yeah. while you were logging back in, I've just started this poll, mm. uh, trying to understand uh, what are the microservices tools that the attendees have used in the past. Okay. Yeah. All of you can see my screen now? Uh, yes, I can see. Uh, somebody from the attendees can give a thumbs up in the chat if they're able to see the screen, that will be helpful. Okay, so yes, they can see us as well. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so then I'll end the poll so that I can share the results with all of us. Hmm. Are you able to see the, this is the result. So 49% of the folks have used API gateways while hmm. Kubernetes and Postman also take a high number here. Fine. Fine. Okay, over to you. Hello everyone. So uh, <clears throat> let me first introduce myself. My name is Khansham Rawat. I am principal architect in Ego. I've been working in Ego uh, uh, since 4.5 years. Uh, we started uh, the digit platform implementation uh, 4.5 years back. So you can say from day one, <clears throat> I, when we started digit, I'm involved in uh, building the digit platform. So the before I jump on to the architecture or design of digit, <clears throat> I want to talk about the uh, the structure what we have in India. So we know like uh, we have a very federated uh, structure, government structure. 
where every rules regulations get change with city to city village to village right and uh, uh, state to state so things are not consistent across <clears throat> india i'm sorry i'm i'm actually not well so uh, so no, at government operation level and you know rule level things are not consistent so building a platform uh for government for urban and which fit into the uh, uh in all of the department and uh, all of the cities state and then at the national level so the thought process was that we will we should be doing some abstraction first and then you know start building the platform at the solution level so uh, from there i'll start now so we first categorize some of the things like we have this core data infrastructure right and core data infrastructure is basically we categorize all our solutioning at the three level on the bottom layer level we kept the core data infrastructure thing it is it is not like okay, this layering gives the access based on okay let's say if it is in bottom so you need to access through some top level layer this is not like this these are the building blocks basically the, uh, all of them whatever you can see on the screen currently all of them are the building blocks and these building blocks we have done the logical grouping so that the accountability and all of that can be set at that level okay and the principle can be set at to that level so we have registered data registry like user <coughs> uh, employee property registry trade license registry like that we have at the data uh, infrastructure layer and then on the top level uh, uh, we have solution and in the middle one we have core services so the core services are the ones which everyone let's say the top level layer uses the core services to achieve the functionality so for example property and trade license both need uh workflow right and so workflow we build as a building block uh and both of them are using the workflow as a uh, core service okay but there is there can be a possibility sometime where you will see that one core service is also dependent on other but mostly these building blocks are uh, isolated okay uh then on the top level we are talking about the uh, urban solution now that layer can be replaced by let's say today we are saying urban solution we can say health solution we can say finance solution this is the top level layer because less uh, and the bottom thing is the platform any system you take you will have login log out right master data management workflow uh um, payments like uh, uh, and and user management all of that you will need in any any kind of system and that is what we are saying that top layer can be replaced by any solution and the bottom layer they can leverage the bottom layers uh for their purposes and we will keep building these building block at the core level uh uh a core service infrastructure layer level so that we can provide more and more capabilities okay so as i said uh we are dealing with the you know diverse system so the first thing what we did is the abstraction okay what what government need what citizen need so digit is a platform between government and citizens it this so there will be something for citizen there will be something for government and they will talk to each other through the platform so the abstraction we did uh, <coughs> uh, 
at at the uh, citizen side we did the i'll come to that slide number 2 later okay the abstraction we did is for citizen side pair so what citizen want to do citizen want to first do the payment it can be the property tax it can be your water charges sewage charges trade license fee or fire and ocp building plan uh, fee anything right and then they want to apply for it i can apply for new trade license i can apply for new water connection i can apply for uh, mutation in the property i can apply for new registration of the property right then inform uh info so this is the pair philosophy then inform inform is all about uh you know uh, to uh, give the events to the citizens like any news circulation or uh, for example any city says okay, okay today tomorrow is curfew or night or curfew because of covid all of that information can be circulated to citizens so citizen needs some information about the government activity right and then we have resolve obviously citizens has some problem so there has to be a grievance addressal uh, module which will solve the problems of the citizens right then from the employee perspective we have care so this is the employee side philosophy where we connect the citizens with the government assist the citizens to fulfill their needs like they don't know how to fill the forms property forms are very long how to apply for building plan approval then resolve their grievances and educate the citizens to uh, about the events or uh, the online services then there is a administrator who will govern this process right so they can govern better if they have the all the visibility <coughs> uh, <coughs> how they can govern let's say uh, how much uh, collection is done in particular area property collection property tax collection then how many shops are running uh, out of license uh, Uh, how many total shops are there how many have the trade license and uh, then we can check uh, how many uh, houses are not paid for uh, water charges all of that governance can be done from the administrator point of view now even not only for citizen even for the employees also okay you supposed to collect the 1 uh, 1 crore rupees in 2021 from this particular area but you have not done this so that that is all comes from the government so then engage the citizen obviously uh, citizen with the government <coughs> assess the performance of the as i said they can assess the citizens also as well as the uh, their own employees also and then reward them if it is applicable right just a bit now i'll come to the technical part of it so the main idea to achieve all of that we uh, uh, need to take care of these things performance at scale so all our building blocks are horizontally as scalable easy extension <coughs> since we are dealing with the diverse system extension and customization should not become you know very tough or very complicated because everyone will have their own requirement own need right and then securing the data privacy is very important when we are collecting the user informations pii data is there so secure the data then data enablement to for the administrator purpose and data analytics purpose the host anywhere we are uh, cloud agnostic even we can deploy <coughs> our whole platform on hdc also and then mobile first because everyone uses mobile nowadays okay so far so good any any question how do you want to run this abhishek you will, we will take the questions in the end or in between no the attendees can uh, post their questions anytime 
or in between as well. So yes, any questions, please put in the chat, raise your hand or put in the Q&A and we are more than happy to answer them for you. Okay. Architecture point of view. So we build the whole platform using the microservice architecture. So we created the small, small building blocks to do their own job so that we can scale them to, um, separately. We can maintain them separately. They are not dependent on uh, each other. So the whole uh, scalability, maintainability problems uh, get uh, solved, right? So this is what it looks like. These are the building blocks we have defined. And by the way, we all of these microservices are REST-based. So all the microservices exposes the REST API. So any data access or any data manipulation can be done through only, only through APIs. There is no backdoor entry for data accessibility for purpose, right? <laughs> so we have user management service for demand, which is billing service, like for generating the bill and uh, collection service for collecting the payment and then file service to upload the document and notification service to send the SMS notification and uh, email notification and even WhatsApp also. Uh, workflow to maintain the this is the state management uh, uh, state management machine which uh, track the application so where this file is going let's say you apply for trade license now it goes to the junior engineer then it goes to uh, the department then department to the some senior person he approves it so all of that details are saved into the Workflow. Then we have authentication and authorization service. <coughs> reporting for reporting uh, purpose, boundary data for keeping the location uh, boundary because everyone has their own locations. Uh, locations in the sense, the, the, physically, so we have one look, everyone has the single location, but logical grouping can be different. And that de depends to department to department. Okay, then we have master MDMS service, which is master data management service. Then we have localization service to support multiple languages. And uh, then uh, <clears throat> on the data infrastructure uh, 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 services side, uh, we have property registry, user registry, employee registry, trade registry, voter registry. And there is a persister. Uh, indexer to persist the data into the database, then indexer to index the data in, onto the Elasticsearch or the secondary data store. Right. Then we can have these dashboards uh, uh, and all. If these, these on the left hand side, you can see the dashboard. On the right hand side, you can see the integrations. Let's say we want to integrate with other systems uh, like Swachita app whenever the grievance get files, then you can integrate. So all of that is there. Uh, we can write our own service and then integrate with any third party system. <clears throat> then we have the municipal solution for properties tax. There is a tax calculator to collect the tax and trade license to um, collect the trade license fee and all the capturing all the attributes complaint to uh, capture the grievance details, photograph of the, if, if applicable, based on the category, then finance, which, which is something we have in coexistence mode. Okay. So performance at scale, uh, this is microservice space, as I already said, we can scale each service separately. We can do this horizontal through the horizontal scalability. <clears throat> and we do the asynchronous processing and we are using Kafka for that. Asynchronous processing means the complete uh, write uh, process is asynchronous. Read is sync and write is async. Okay. And we are using Docker, Kubernetes, 
uh, for uh, containerization and container container uh, orchestrator as uh, we are using Kubernetes. Uh, from the extension uh, point of view, so the philosophy what we have convention over configuration and configuration over code. So <clears throat> most of the places, if something is well understood, we know okay this can be true or false then we keep the convention uh, thing if it is it required the configuration then we provide either in master data or as the environment service level configuration so most of the things are configurable so that um, it can fulfill uh, most of the needs uh, of uh, the different cities basically i would say we can extend the API. Uh, so let's say we want to, uh, before property registration or before trade license registration, uh, we want to have some other process to be enabled. In that case, uh, we, can, we can, before calling this API, we can enable another post hook or pre hook. It can be before or after. Uh, <clears throat> post hoc or pre hook to call that particular API. Or if we want to add, let's say one more field or two more field, that can be done within the API itself without changing the API schema. So we, to add new field, but if you want to apply the validation on that field, uh, it could be your format validation or it could be your business validation these uh, uh, validation can be applied using the pre hook so you you just need to configure a pre hook at the api gateway level and that api will get called before uh, uh, the actual api call so what will happen you can apply your business logic if business logic pass then you send the success response then it will call the actual api if business get uh, logic failed, you reject the request from then and there. Then we have consumers and uh, callback functionalities. Since we are doing this uh, asynchronously, we will need to have that. And then master, manage, master data management service also to manage the configuration. Yeah. Secure data uh, through SSL and uh, uh, we are encrypting the data all the uh, encryption key are supported at the tenant level so for each tenant we can have different encryption decryption keys and uh, we are doing authentication authorization uh, checks and even uh, uh, item potency check at the api gateway level we have access control, role-based access. Currently, we have implemented RBAC, uh, which is role-based access control. AVAC, still we need to implement. We are just uh, uh, thinking about uh, do we need to implement that or not. AVAC is an attribute-based access control since that's not something as of now very, very useful for us. So we kept it uh, not to implement like AVAC as of now, but currently we have our back service. Post anywhere, it's cloud. Uh, there was one question in the uh, Q and A. What is the difference between registries and data infra? It was long pending. So, so uh, the, as I said, this is the logical grouping. We are saying data as in, if you will ask uh, what is the difference between user service and the core service? No, this is the logical grouping. Data infra is the logical grouping of the registries. So we have multiple registries. Now those registries falls under the data infra layer. So in the beginning itself, I said, this layering is nothing is a logical grouping. These are the independent building blocks, basically. So we can place any block anyway, just from the understanding purpose, we kept it into the logical grouping map. So there is actually no difference. Thank you, Gansham. Hope that answers the question. <clears throat> we can continue. Yeah, so uh, then we have mobile first approach. So 
uh, we we develop the mobile app first, and all the UI also are customizable uh, through the JavaScript injection. You can write uh, the without changing the existing code. You can write your JavaScript, which will get injected at at the runtime, and then. Uh, if let's say you want to capture one more field uh, on front end, back end, may we have that uh, capability that API may you can have the uh, additional schema defined so that you can add certain more attribute within the same API schema. And the at the front end side, you can inject the JavaScript at the runtime. Okay, so this is uh, the flow basically. So first client make the request, client can be your um, mobile app, it can be the web app, it can be WhatsApp, it can be IVR, can be anything or your simple postman. You make the call, it goes to Nginx pro proxy and it checks whether it's a request for the static resource or the API call. If it is a static resource, it goes to the Nginx CDN and return the static resource from then and there. If it is API call, uh, then it goes to the uh, API gateway. And at the API gateway, what all, I don't know whether you can see it, but I will read it out for you. Uh, we Currently, we are using Netflix Joule as an API gateway, okay? And uh, uh, it performs authentication, authorization, okay? and injecting the correlation IDs uh, and checking the item potency. Okay. And then uh, uh, once the authentication and authorization success, it this is the success case. case. If it is failed, it will return the, then this flow won't applicable at all, okay? Then it will return the response from there itself. Anything fails whether authentication or authorization. If it is success, then it goes to the uh, micro, microservice rest layer. It can be any microservice. This is the uh, generic uh, uh, web sequence diagram. Forward the request and what service will be doing, it will validate. It will perform the format validation, business validation, master data validation. Once all the validations are success, and then it will generate one unique acknowledgement number for accepting the request and then send it onto the queue. That is the Kafka queue. And return the response to the client from there. Once it is sent it successfully, then return the success response to the client along with the uh, acknowledgement number. Okay, so that callbacks and if they want to recheck what happened to my request. And then uh, once it is successfully persisted onto the queue from there, there are parallel consumers we are running. One is to take that data and persist that data into the database. Another consumer we are running, which is working again parallelly to take that data and um, denormalize the data and then put it onto the elastic search through Kafka connect. Okay, another consumer we are running to send the notification. Another consumer we are running for uh, trigger the workflow. So workflow will get started. So there are multiple consumer we can we, we are running on this particular event. Okay, so this is the whole flow. This is how uh, this uh, works. Any uh, mo mostly all the services has the similar kind of flow. On the technology side, uh, cloud agnostic, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, private data center, anything or uh, anywhere you can deploy. Uh, we are using Docker for containerization, Kubernetes for container management, orchestrator. Okay, and. Uh, uh, we are using Helm chart for packaging and bootstrap. You will come to know more detail about this uh, uh, DevOps technology in the DevOps session. And then uh, for infra as code, Ansible, 
we are using and then jenkins for ci cd pipeline monitoring kali we are using prometheus kivana and elastic serve so uh, we are creating the dashboards on the kivana monitoring dashboard and then we have github repository with the uh, mit license technology side mein we are using or open api specification to define first api uh, all the apis we defined in swagger uh, 3.0 it's 2.0 it is a older slide actually but now we are using 3.0 even we converted all 2.0 into 3.0 swagger stack spring boot we are using for the microservices at the backend side <coughs> kafka for the asynchronous processing postman for testing elastic searcher for uh, elastic search for uh, uh, searching and dashboarding reporting data analytics purpose and pack agnostic even we have done this uh, one of the r module is built on node js uh, where others are on spring boot <clears throat> ui side we are using react uh, html5 and materialized view for ux design yeah thank you i can take some questions if there are abhishek yes uh, gansham yeah i think i'm done on the architecture and the microservice side on the coexistence side uh, i don't have any slide for that but I'll, it is it is similar uh, so one of our module is finance which is uh, uh, which is not developed in microservice it was done in monolith so what we did but monolith uh, maybe what uh, it was it was like uh, uh, modular uh, approach we took when when we did this in monolith so it was not hard to take it out from there so we took that out and we have not built it into the microservice that particular module uh, it's a huge module so we we took it out from there and deploy we and we containerized it and we deployed that along with the microservices okay but that particular module only now uh, all all of that so what happens once we log in into the uh, uh, system we get one menu for finance we click on that and then it once you click on that it will open a iframe okay and on this iframe side uh, uh, it will be running this finance thing and when um, we we will be using the same token uh, for the authentication and authorization purpose so whenever even though if they log out in finance system it will call back to the digit system saying that this person has been logged out so we will invalidate the token here also as of now we are using oauth uh, token so uh this uh, uh, we need to uh, trigger an event when something happened with the token either invalidate the token or delete the token whatever or refresh the token we need to we need to send uh, the event uh, for coexistence modules but in case of let's say we are using jwt we don't need to because jwt are the self contained token and we are we are uh, Uh, hoping that soon we will implement the jwt and uh, get it off uh, with this uh, synchronous calls to sign in sign off so we will have single uh, sign on using jwt data so uh, on the coexistence coexistence side so it will open in iframe and then from there the finance ka flow will start okay and then <coughs> if you uh the only functionality what it is taking from digit uh by default is the uh, uh it is behind the api gateway first thing 
the authentication and authorization are by default getting applied applied on it but if it wants let's say master data management or it is it want to access anything it is communicating through the api calls okay <clears throat> through the api calls. so it is also uh, that uh, finance module also leveraging the digit microservices yeah somebody raised the hand yeah there are a few questions so first i'll allow uh, sumit chetri yeah you can uh, ask your question sumit uh, yeah hi gansham uh, so hi. i had one question related to uh, because someone earlier in the previous session uh, they mentioned that uh, you use elastic search for sort of uh, the analytics and the dashboards uh, side of the story and uh, just a while ago you presented uh, in the in the whole scheme of things so you have those consumers wherein one is available there could be multiple one for the persistence and one for the elastic search so now how do you ensure data correctness and or and or completeness when is when it comes to these two uh, parallel systems like the postgresql rdbms uh, rdbms and the elastic search engine for example hmm. so basically you are saying what if a consumer failed to push that data onto the uh, elastic search. yes because see what will happen is these dashboards uh, probably are also very relevant right yes so, yes, yes. Uh, they have to be in sync at all times so yeah yes, so i just had yes. one question around that yeah yeah so basically first of all we have the error queue okay okay so if anything fails at the consumer level let's say uh, even that can happen in the persister also while it is persisting the data into the database let's say if you it, it could be a anything your database is down okay but you accepted the request and consumer is already running now you are persisting that try to persist the data what will happen now the other uh, other uh, uh, case could be let's say somebody forgot to put one validation on the min and max length of the attribute now it is defined in the database let's say 10 character and you are accepting 20 character now it will fail into the persister right right similar so we have the error queue okay uh, so whenever a error will occur at the indexer level or persister level anywhere right it will publish onto that queue the data data see the most important thing is here we cannot lo lose the data okay so with the data it will persist onto the error queue and then error queue will process it and it will check it is a recoverable error or non recoverable error if it is a recoverable error it will retry for example database is down is a recoverable error okay so whenever data will be base will be up and this will retry to persist that data right and if let's say the, the other problem is non recoverable somebody need to alter the field data or somebody need to alter the column size right mm -hmm. so in that case it will put it put it into the another bucket saying that this is the non recoverable data okay and somebody manually need to look at that data and that's how we will come to know okay okay there is a failure this is the data we need to keep it in sync so then we will make it okay and when it comes to the reactive or the asynchronous programming that we are talking about this mm -hmm. is only at the api layer or also at the database layer we are doing reactive programming for example it is api layer only as of now. okay Thanks. Uh, no other questions. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Gansham, we can take a few more questions. I have yeah, yeah. questions here. Uh, so Nitesh Parmar, so the question is, I understand the front end is developed using React. The apps are UI responsive that runs from any browser client. There are no mobile apps being developed. Please confirm. So uh, currently what we are, we are writing the, let's say Android uh, wrapper ios wrapper on top of the same uh, code base and which is getting converted into the app and then uh, we, the, the, the same code base is getting used on the web so you are right not not we are not writing native app okay so that answers your question nitesh please give us a thumbs up in the chat while i close the question for you <clears throat> we'll move to the next question this is by jaydeep chakravarti 
the question is is the microservice implemented as serverless service or always online these are online as of okay these are online so i'm closing that question the next question is by rosemary sway is the finance module full integrated with other module like property tax trade license etc no need it's no not... we don't need finance is all together is uh, uh, it doesn't need to integrate with anyone okay. if anyone want to integrate with finance to get the financial details then probably they can but what we integrated with finance is the billing and collection part see we have building blocks property is one building block to deal with the property details billing service and collection service are dealing with the payments and the bills right so, so the payment and bill service are integrated asynchronously with the finance system okay so basically uh, same services billing service and the collection service receiving the payment for trade license for property so eventually once we integrate these two services with finance all other revenue services are integrated by default from the financial perspective okay that was a good expression thank you gansham so i guess that answers the questions for rosemary we have two more questions uh, the other question is where are we managing role based authorization in which service implementation does it exist access control in access control okay yeah. okay that service name is access control service okay i think shweta parashar also has a question rest api or services can be customized by or new services can be added by implementer can you rephrase that question i mean yeah rest api or services can uh -huh. it be customized or new services can be added by an implementer we can add n number of services as long as whoever is managing the environment where we are deploying it if they allow mm -hmm. that's not a problem we are using microservice architects architecture so we can put n number of services that's out of the question and then uh, the other question which is customization as i said there are two possibilities either you want to extend something you want to uh, say okay, okay i will keep uh, 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 i will write a service which will get called and then the eventually that uh, what digit is providing that service will get called mm -hmm. so i'll accept the api and then i'll make that call to the uh, uh, digit service and before that whatever i need to do i'll do it the other thing is if you want to add some more fields now the question might be if our question is on let's say existing field may if they want to make some changes no that's not possible but you can add some more schema into the api define your schema and then you can add um, more and more field if you want to catch it from the conversation what i see is uh, the microservices architecture on which digit is built seems to be very flexible for the developers is what i understand right yes yes mm -hmm. okay so we'll move to the next question again by jaydeep uh, how are the async notifications sent back to the client is there a possibility of the notification being dropped see possibility side there i, I cannot say there is no possibility that a synchronous process cannot drop any message okay the possibility comes from like say all of your all of all of your services are gone down altogether or your kafka is gone down completely okay that that could be your case where you lose the messages but that won't happen in the normal scenarios uh, okay. but this question yeah Yes, uh, Gansham. Sorry, I... sorry. Somebody was saying something, so I was just waiting. No, so that was the last second question. But the first question was, uh, how are the async notifications sent back to the client? No, we we async notification we don't send uh, back to client. These notification consumer, what I explained is for if you enable, let's say if you receive X event, then notify somebody. 
then that consumer will send sms or email or something right that's the notification now if you are talking about callback just reply back if you want to talk about callback okay hmm that seems to answer the question i'll move to the next one by rajesh singh is it easy to integrate with open source like ldap or any of the likes yeah yeah it's it's is very easy even i'll i'll tell you one thing okay let's say i need to move uh, currently we are uh, using postgres okay and elastic search but now we are building another platform which is uh, pfm uh, for finance uh, uh, the name is ifix uh, information exchange financial information exchange platform uh, there we are using with the same uh, services we are using mongo as db and druid as a uh, our uh, secondary analytics uh, database okay what 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 change changes there currently the persister which we have which is dealing with the database let's say okay uh, it is dealing with the uh, postgres database what we need to do we just need to change that okay we plug out that persister and write another persister for mongodb for elder okay so that's quite easy the only problem what uh, we we will face is on the search side right so that's why i always kept it on the search side uh, uh, we we do uh, from the secondary database okay and then from the uh, so one single service handle that we make that service call and that fetches the data from the elastic search based on the configuration now if that we can plug out and plug in with other less druid one we are sorted okay so those are the questions so there's one request uh, from tapujit bhattacharya uh, can you please share the sequence diagram uh, web sequence diagram i don't know tapujit can you please elaborate which sequence diagram you are requesting for i i think this one he is talking about uh, the this one right if this is the one please give a yes this is the one you can yeah okay yeah sure maybe we can take a screenshot and send it here and which we will also share with you at the end of the or once the session is completed as well so we have another good 10 minutes so can we see more questions coming in or or if while the questions are coming in um uh, gansham do you want to share one of your experience okay we have tapujit who has raised his hand let us yes tapujit you can speak now so hi 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 everybody hi egov team i think i am quite familiar to egov so uh, i'm quite hi, familiar tapujit yeah yeah i'm good so i have a question current uh, recent in recent days uh, we have faced a couple of transaction failure issues uh, so uh, mostly related to payment and payment gateway and uh, what is happening sometimes transaction tables are not getting updated sometimes status of the application is not getting updated so we are having intermediate uh, failures uh, and intermittently it is happening so most of the time we had to handle these cases by either uh, manually deleting the data or manually updating the data hmm. and sometimes kafka is also i don't know kafka is keeping mum for a second or two and that time if request comes it is not getting catered so these mm -hmm. things we are facing uh, and this is on reality we are facing many payment issues we have faced and most of the time we are we have to handle it manually like this so mm. are you trying to handle these things or by any means a better transaction management uh, yeah. because it's a distributed system yeah sometimes response is not coming properly from the api gateway uh, from the payment gateway if at yeah. all coming it is not getting invoked in actual time bill is getting expired as a result that bill is not being picked up and the transaction is not getting updated as i say i mean there are various things 
uh, various uh, shades of it but most yeah when we deal with the distributed system this is what we faced mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm not no surprise yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. right right so, so what is your approach uh, of uh, handling the this uh, inner funnel i mean uh, if it happens uh, if it keeps on happening it will really create a lot of trouble so two things we are doing uh, uh, currently the project mm -hmm. one is as i explained about the error queue so one mm -hmm. level error queue we have currently is which shows on the dashboard now we will have the another level which will categorize uh, into the uh, you know recoverable non recoverable and then persist the data and it will give you the reports also monthly wise let's say what happened to the system okay the mm -hmm. other part what we are uh, currently exploring is the generic callbacks thing okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where we will write the generic callback uh, uh, event listener okay mm -hmm. and those event listener will uh, communicate to the appropriate service based on the failure failure type okay. okay so that is currently in progress i know uh, there are glitches uh, mm -hmm. and uh, i appreciate that you are currently dealing it manually with that <laughs> be with us we'll give you the automated tool for that sure sure thank you uh, but tapojit i think it will be great uh, mm -hmm. if you can document these mm -hmm. uh, issues it will mm -hmm. help us while we are doing the development of or designing mm -hmm. for this sure. uh, generic callback thing Mm -hmm. uh if you can document that and share it uh, with the uh, ego team uh, i'll definitely. really appreciate that definitely i will do it definitely no issues yeah. i will do it yeah. thank you thanks for answering it thank you and this is what i like about this ecosystem i mean even our partners are more than happy to help us out <laughs> so we'll move okay there's another question uh, for us kansham from arkit das is the current version of reporting support server side automation sorry uh, the question is is the current version of reporting support mm -hmm. server side pagination oh, yes <coughs> okay. yes i guess i i am not sure about it but as far as i remember uh be did some of the enhancement in the reporting service i'll come back on that uh, abhishek arkit so yes you can expect an answer from us on that. <coughs> all of us have to give a big thumbs up to gansham for pulling it this off even under the influence of dolo so we have another six more minutes if there are no questions gansham do you want to share any of your experience okay there's another question otp message service name by navin gupta what is mm. the otp message service name so it deal with the otp uh, thing okay so like it generate the otp otp has some rules right uh, <clears throat> like once the otp is generated for a particular user id you could not generate another otp okay mm -hmm. the otp need to be expired in let's say 30 second so that it cannot be reused once it is used then you cannot re reuse the same otp again with the, so those this service deals with that otp stuff Okay, and they want to know the name as well. Uh, the yeah. name itself is the OTP service. Oh, okay, super. So that answers the last question. Okay, we have five more minutes. I think we'll give them a couple of more minutes to ask for questions. Tapujit, your hand is still raised. You have another question? Okay, another question by Rajesh Tiwari. How easy it is to add a new user-defined column in DB? is there any tool written within the application yes you don't need to you you, you see uh, uh at the ddl level we will need to write a ddl to add the column but at the code level to persist any data into that column you don't need to write you need to write the persister config for that that's all so persister config may you will need to write an uh, one line of uh, uh, configuration saying that this is the field is mapped to this column Well, I guess that answers the question for Rajesh Tiwari. Mm 
the session had the most uh, questions asked, uh, Gansham. I mean, in the first session, we hardly had about four or five questions, but here we have 13, another one which comes about. What about new report development again by Rajesh Tiwari? We can do and write the configuration for new reporting. Okay. Again, that's a configuration within the reporting service as a YAML file. So for each report, we have a YAML file where we define the, uh, uh, all the columns, what all columns you want, in which order you want. By default, whatever order you define, it will take the same order. And then uh, the data comes from the sources of the data and all of that. You check the reporting service. We, we just need to write the configuration, no code. Okay. It's 14 questions. Can we make it 15 or 20 in the next three minutes? Tapujit raised hand again. Yes, he he can speak. I mean, he's given the permission. Tapujit, you you can you can speak. Hello. <coughs> Sir. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, you are audible now. Yes. Regarding this report service, I have a very fine observation which we faced in our current ODISA implementation. So how currently the report works? This is for Ghansham. So report, what it is doing, it is directly making SQL queries to the database and showing the results, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the cases, the client is asking for many various kinds of reports. For We prepared the reports, that's not an issue. But what is happening due to the humongous quantity of data, either the query is taking more than 60 seconds, it is fading and the report is not coming. This is happening most of the cases. Hmm. So, the, I mean, this is an enhancement. 90% cases, mein tapojit, what I have seen, people have written the, the query itself in a wrong way. Huh. Okay, and that, me... that you do in any system that will happen. 90% so... of cases I'm talking about and hmm. when we were in Punjab, the same problem hmm. faced by other hmm. folks also. This is not right. the new one. And 90% uh -huh. whenever we corrected the query, hmm. it, it works fine. But by the way, whenever the data will start growing, Okay. Hmm. And yes, if you we are expect... having one party will be and in ten lakhs of consumers. Right. So, so once the data start growing, you cannot have a select star wala query. That right. report doesn't make sense. Hmm. Sometimes we need to check that this select star doesn't work. Then okay, then you should constrain that with the time period also at least. Okay, you cannot pull out all the payments from last three years. Yeah? Mm. When there are now we have 20 lakh connection or 50 lakh connection or one crore connection. Okay. The same query or the same, even while we are designing the report, that, that is what happened. Uh, the project. Mm. Technology cannot solve everything. <laughs> okay. Sometimes people need to solve the things at their level. Even banks doesn't give you that one more than one month data. How you take it? You put an offline request. They send you the PDF notification. Mm. Right? Mm. Now, if you try to fetch on the real time, it will fail 100%. So, just check the query, check the report. 100%, this is not the problem of reporting system. This is the problem of the requirement itself. Sometimes people say, give me all the properties ka, uh, details, how many properties are there totally. Exactly. We have many such reports asking for many. all the demands generated or asking for all the taxes generated, asking for all the bills. So asking that the, the, there is no limitation on the ask. So hmm. we need so to deal with it. Is, how do you tell the client that whatever you are telling him may not sound uh, relevant to us as per uh, system perspective, you may... No, if you Change. want such thing, please use Elasticsearch for that. Don't disturb the actual uh, transactional database for that. Don't don't give them pain. Okay, we have created one separate uh, doctor to treat such requirement. Okay? Yeah. What is that? Go to Elasticsearch. Write your own dashboard. What is see? Is just that you are viewing within the application that report. Isn't it yeah. same data is available on Elasticsearch except the PII data? Yeah. 
it is easy if you want the similar kind of report write your own dashboard mm-hmm. and take the report from there there is a download option there also right download as pdf download ex- export as uh, mm-hmm. uh, excel go there mm-hmm. have so it's have a little bit of oh, <laughs> whiskey and then will your own dashboard <laughs> see every technology cannot solve these problem right do you agree on that yeah yeah i agree see they are putting request for which we have to make some uh, uh, aggregate functions and other thing we are bound to write aggregate functions and those functions are killing right if you if you write group by and aggregate functions in a query So what it will do? It will literally make the query very slow and late, and that is literally happening. And that is why I am saying, rather than giving them this view now, when you are dealing with such people, when they don't understand, kid, and I am pretty sure, I am pretty sure they are not even using that data. Okay, once hmm. you say, "Kay, I want all the demands," after ten record, you will get bored. क्या करोगे उतने रिकॉर्ड का एक लाख रिकॉर्ड दे दूंगा आप क्या निकाल लोगे उसमें से मेरे को पता hmm. कुछ नहीं hmm. निकालो सी इट मेक सेंस पीपल फॉर पीपल के ओके सो डोंट 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 आस देम टू राइट द रिपोर्टिंग और ये प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है वो प्रॉब्लम हो टेल देम सर आई हैव अ बेटर सॉल्यूशन फॉर यू सर दिस इज द डैशबोर्ड ओके करेंटली व्हाट यू आर यूजिंग डीएसएस और केवाना Mm, kibana i think kibana very very good now sir this is this is the kibana dashboard you can build your own dashboard here okay and this mm. is the youtube video <laughs> we <laughs> learn it from it if they are not building sir tell us we will build you build it for you and then you can have a look mm. to that report don't try to solve here otherwise you will choke your uh, database right What the main transaction will get impacted because of that. We have short passed by four minutes, but there are two more questions. Uh, Ganesh, yeah. if you don't mind, uh, Rajesh Tiwari has a question. Is it possible to add new UD table? Which table? UD table. Uh, yes, of course. Okay. We can define n number of table, but there has to be service which will deal with that table. Who will insert the data? who will read the data from the uh, table mm-hmm. okay so basically you are saying can i write the own my own service yes can i write my own database yes can i have own my own table yes okay then the last question for the day i guess is by jaydeep chakravarty abhiyan is the design based on multi tenant approach yes multi tenant okay in that case can you give an outline of the tenant segregation in terms of services and data so each each table may be on each api may we have an tenant id attribute mm-hmm. so the data which we are inserting into the database is along with the tenant okay so if even though the authorization and authentication works based on the tenant if you have the access for that particular tenant then only you will be able to access the data for, for this particular tenant okay and how is this done on mm-hmm. elastic search is it the, the same? same the same okay. same 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 Okay. Another question. And person. elastic search. Me, by the way, we don't have the PII data. And anyways, so uh, even though if somebody uh, searching that data, I think this is all public data. Anyways. Okay. And the other question by Prasoon Kumar: Can we write if else conditions in PDF service? If else service. Uh, if else condition. I think this is very developer level question. I will need to check some developer for that. Sure, Prasun. We will get back to you on this. So we have two questions to come back for, which we will do with Arkit Das and Prasun Kumar. We will come back to you, folks. Okay. So, so basically, I think we will need to write down the full question. What he is asking is, can we write the if else con- con- uh, condition through configuration, not through code? Is okay. that right, Prasun? I mean, yeah. Yes, through configs. Uh-huh. I think that is something I will need to check to that with the developer. Sure. So Arkit Das and Prasun Kumar, you can expect a report from. But ninety percent, I am sure. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay. But yeah, let's confirm and get back, like you said. I think what they are using, uh, 
is pdf maker i guess make pdf or pdf maker make pdf i guess and uh, even you can uh, check it right now make pdf tool supports con but anyways i'll uh, come back on this yeah thank you sorry perfect so that's uh, the end of the questions that we have and also the time limit that we've had so thank you all for making it for the second session and gansham for popping extra dollars to make it for the training thank you so much for this and yes uh, so we can again catch up uh, by 4 o'clock for the third session of the day uh, with our next trainer on devops thank you all thank you gansham and all of you have a great evening yeah last question is there you want to take that uh, yeah rajesh tiwari is bpm configurable bpm means bpm what is uh, can you please elaborate on that rajesh maybe in the chat if you can post it if you are talking about the workflow system bpm mm, business process management services is yes what configuration you want to give us the configuration as well rajesh what kind of configuration you are asking for okay business process management but so you are talking about the workflow service basically process management is the workflow service which manages all the processes 1 2 3 steps we defined <clears throat> so all of that is configurable in the workflow service itself super i think the next time we will have to keep more than an hour yeah for ourselves thank you thank you everyone thank it you all it was really interactive yep thank you Bye. Thank you, man.